Radar Stabilization, Part 6. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about sea stabilization and ground stabilization of radars and ARPAs. So my objectives, I'm going to explain and demonstrate radar ARPA stabilization methods, explain inputs and outputs for sea stabilized radars and ARPAs, ground stabilized radars and ARPAs, and echo or ground referencing on an ARPA. Explain the use of each stabilization, then demonstrate vectors of sea and ground stabilization, and explain and demonstrate navigation lines. This is gonna be my reference or base slide. Our own ship's gonna be going zero, zero, zero degrees at 10 knots. Up to the northwest, we're gonna have a contact that's dead in the water. To the northeast, we're gonna have contact going two, two, zero degrees at 10 knots. And down to the southeast, a buoy that's attached to the seabed. We're also gonna have a current. We're gonna have a zero, nine, zero degree set at a drift of four knots. We'll be using true vectors. On an ARPA, simply toggle between relative vectors and true vectors and set your vector length. On a graphical display, as a plotting sheet, you will be using the E to R for our own ship's course and speed and the E to M for the contact's course and speed. Sea stabilized radars and ARPAs, inputs and outputs. The input you're going to need is a gyro. This gyro will align with a meridian on the earth or on a navigation chart, and the output will give us a true course. Your input would be a speed log, like a dual axles Janus array system, and the output would be give us a true speed or speed through the water. This is required for collision avoidance. This will show us the aspect of the vessel and under the coal regs, under the steering sailing rules, will tell us what our obligation is. So sea stabilized radars and ARPAs. Under sea stabilization, we are not affected by the set and drift. We're just floating with the water. So we will have a vector heading due north at 10 knots. On a graphical display, a plotting sheet, this would be our E, this would be an R. On an ARPA, toggle between relative vectors to true vectors, set your vector length, and you will see our own ship's vector on the ARPA. This contact going 220-10 knots will also have a 10 knot vector heading 220 degrees. What about this contact up to the northwest that's dead in the water? Will they have a true vector? They will have a relative vector but they will not have a true vector because they're simply floating with the ocean. This buoy, however, that's attached to the seabed, you will not see this on the plotting sheet. You will see this on an ARPA. If you acquire this buoy and you put it inside your vessel tracking system, it will have a vector heading to the west at 270 degrees, and the vector will be four knots long. This is how we assess or get an estimate of what the set and drift of the current is on an ARPA. If you look at your radar readout on, on your ARPA, it'll give the range, the bearing, this closest point of approach, time the closest point of approach, and for the course, it's gonna say 270. This is was the direction of that vector. And it's gonna say the speed was gonna be four knots. So 
the set is going to be 180 degrees out of this number right here. So the set's going to be 0, 0,90 0 degrees, and the drift of the current's going to be 4 knots. Ground stabilize, inputs and outputs. An input you can have for your ground stabilize would be a global navigation satellite system, or our GPS. Automatic identification system, this will be for the AIS. Since, since it comes from a GPS, it's going to be, the contact will be ground stabilized. You can bottom track a dual axis Doppler. The output from these will give you course over ground and speed over ground. Although the AIS will give you the heading of the vessel, it will not give you the true course of the contact. And this is best used for navigation. So ground stabilized ARPAs, you will not see this on a plotting sheet. We're still going zero, zero degrees at 10 knots, contact going two, two, zero, 10 knots, contact dead in the water, a buoy attached to the seabed. We still have at 0, 090 0 degrees set at four knots, and we're using true vectors. Though this time, our own ship going due north, this time we will be affected by the easterly current, will be set off to the east. This contact going 220, they're gonna be heading now maybe 210 degrees or 215 degrees and it'll be a little bit shorter because they're bucking the current they may be eight or nine knots this vessel that's dead in the water up here to the northwest this time they will show that they have a four knot vector heading to the east this buoy that's attached to the seabed they're already ground stabilized so they will not have a vector. So this ground referencing is great for navigation because now it's going, our own ship is being affected by the current. So we need, an, it'll help us know if we're gonna make it to the pilot station on time, whether we need to speed up, slow down. It is not good for collision avoidance. Ground referencing or echo referencing. It's, you can pick any acquired track target on your ARPA. And when you acquire that target, the velocity is going to be assumed to be zero knots. And our own ship is calculated based on this assumption. And when you acquire the target, there's going to be an R next to the contact. So the input that we need is going to be a, an acquired contact. I'm going to be using a buoy when, for my explanation, and the output's going to be zero knots. And this is best used for coastal and inland navigation. So echo referencing or ground referencing or ground stabilization on an ARPA. The advantages and disadvantages. The advantages allows us to calculate the ground track of any of our track targets. You can do this with ground stabilization. You do, do not need the echo reference to do this. It allows for true motion of parallel index lines. It allows for electronic navigation lines and map overlays for coastal and inland navigation. The disadvantage it doesn't give us true courses and true speeds, which we need for collision avoidance. But since it's an ARPA and you have an acquired target, you still have the possibility of a target swap or loss of acquisition, like in a heavy rainstorm. Echo referencing or ground referencing to set up navigation lines on an ARPA. 
Many ARPAs no longer have the availability to set up a navigation line. Navigation lines were used in the past before we had chart plotters, before we had electronic chart display and information systems like our ECTUS today. And if you do, the ARPA will state how you can set them up, the ARPA manual will. You can set them up using a range and bearing, or you can set them up using a latitude and longitude, or you can set them up using our Cartesian coordinates. To set up a navigation line, the ARPA will say how many lines that you can draw on the ARPA. The most I've seen to date is 16 lines. First thing we need to do is acquire and track a buoy. So we also we need to set up echo referencing and it will put an R next to my buoy. Once this is acquired and I have it echo referenced, then I can draw my navigation lines, my vessel traffic lanes on the ARPA. Then to ensure that I stay in the vessel traffic lanes, I'll alter course to starboard here, and then I can start tracking down the traffic lanes. If you lose this buoy due to a target swap or a target loss, what happens to these navigation lines? They start floating all over the ARPA. So you have to make sure you have a good reference for your navigation lines. So to review my radar stabilization objectives, we explained and demonstrated radar ARPA stabilization methods. We explained inputs and outputs for sea stabilized radars and ARPAs, ground stabilized radars and ARPAs, and echo or ground referencing on an ARPA. We explained the use of each one of those stabilizations. We demonstrated vectors of sea and ground stabilization and explained and demonstrated navigation lines.